Hi, this is Scott Marshman with eCabinets Tips and Tricks. In this video, I will show you how you can create a macro to automatically format eCabinets cut list that is imported into Excel without any advanced knowledge of VBA. So stick around and see how I've done it. Okay, what I got here is the exact same cut list that I had in part one of this series. And what I want to do is I want to extract the uh, cabinet name. But also, if it is an assembly, I want it to say, for example, in this case right here, assembly number one and then A1C1 or A1C2. Or if it is a batch assembly, um, BA1, BAC1. Now, I said this was the exact same cut list, but uh, actually it's not. I did add some uh, batch assemblies and some actual batch cabinets to this cut list so that we could test out our macro and see if it'll work in just about any scenario and what I mean by scenario is this cabinet name here um, you can see that this one is much shorter than this one over here on the top it's quite long and I want it to work basically no matter what cabinets I have in my job so I'm going to start with uh, column H here but before I start recording my macro, I want to make sure that I am not on the sheet component listing. I'm on another sheet because I want to record the fact that I'm selecting the sheet component listing. This way, if for whatever reason I try to run the macro and I'm on a different sheet, the code will tell, tell the uh, program to select sheet component listing and then run the macro. So, I'm going to click on my developer. Uh, ribbon here or my developer tab. Now if you don't see your developer tab you can go to file options and customize ribbon and then under main tabs you'll see developer down here. If it's not checked, check it and then click OK. Then you'll have your developer tab available. So I'm going to click on my developer tab. Now I'm going to go record macro and I'm going to give it a name of um, the format sheet component listing. Now you can see that I've got my name in here and I do not have any spaces between each word. I just have the first letter of each word capitalized. And that's because you cannot have spaces in your macro name. You could put an underscore between each word, but no spaces. Now I need to give a shortcut key. Well, you don't have to, but I'm going to, to show you how you can do that. And I want to use a capital S for sheet component listing. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and type S. Now it tells me that if I hold down my control and my shift and type the letter S, it's going to execute this macro. And I want to make sure that it is stored in my personal macro workbook. And I can type in a description if I want. I'm going to click OK. Now we are recording. It's going to record every single mouse click that I make. Every time I scroll left, right, up, and down, it's going to record all that. Um, so be mindful of the fact that you probably don't want to randomly click and um, just randomly scroll back and forth because it's going to record all that and it could slow down your macro. But let me go ahead and select sheet component listing. And under column H here, I want to go to data and text to columns and delimited and next. And I want to use, I want to make sure everything is unchecked except for other and I'm going to use my dash again just like I did in the first video and I'm going to click finish and it has separated our columns for us and I actually have like one or let's see as far as extra column goes I've got my original name column here and then I've got one two three and maybe even four extra columns I'm going to um, auto fit this column here this is the column that we want to extract this assembly number from. Um, these columns over here are basically useless for us right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them. But I want to make sure that in future jobs it will get rid of any extra possible columns. So I'm going to highlight all of column J and hold down my control and shift key. And that's going to take me all the way to the end of Excel. I'm just going to right click in one of these column headers here and go delete. 
and it deleted any extra columns that might be in Excel. Now, what I need to do is I want to extract the A1, C1, A1, C2, and all these batch, all these uh, batch assembly numbers and everything, but I don't want all this text to go with it. So I'm going to use text to columns again, and this time my delimiter is going to be the period. So highlight that whole column, text to columns, delimited, next, and under other I'm going to type period, and finish. Now you can see that we have two more columns added. This is the column that has the data in it that I want. This column is no longer any good, so I'm going to delete it. Now I want to keep this column. Um, but I do want to clear the content, so I'm going to go um, highlight the whole column, right click, clear contents. I'm going to use this as a helper column to join this string of text with this string of text. But before I do that, I need to, I'm going to use a formula. Now, um, Excel has the autofill option that you can use when you type in a formula. You can double click and it will send it, that uh, copy that formula all the way down to the end to the very last row of data in this case 163 but that's not a good feature to use when you're recording a macro because what it's going to tell the macro to do is go down to row 163 so if you got more data on a future job it's only going to execute that code to row 163 so what I want to do is I want to use my control shift and down option to highlight the column and then type in the formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in my name here, go to Control, Shift, and Down, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click Copy, and I'm just going to paste values. Now I'm going to hit my Escape key to get out of my copy mode, and I'm going to click in cell I2 there, and I'm going to go to Control, Shift, Down again. And now this whole column that has data in it is highlighted. So if I had 500 rows, the code is going to highlight 500 rows there. Now I need to type my formula in here. So I'm going to go up here to my formula bar and I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to type in equals this cell and I'm going to use my ampersand to join the text and this cell. Now I need to hit I need to hold down my control key and hit enter and it will populate that formula and everything that's highlighted. So control and enter. And you can see that it's got everything there. Now I need to come in here and clean up this text that is these numbers that are stored as text. And you see this this green triangle if you watch my first video, part one of this series, you saw where I just highlighted all this and selected the box to format as number. Now, Excel will not record that in the macro, so we have to do something a little bit different. But before we do that, I'm going to get rid of these inch symbols so that we can actually convert that into numbers. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to go home and go into find and select and find and I want to go to replace and I want to find my inch symbol or quotes there and I want to replace with nothing. So I'm not going to type anything in there. I'm going to replace all and click OK and close. Now you can see that we have our green triangle there and like I said it's not going to do any good to click in this and select convert to number. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to go under data and I'm going to use text to columns. I'm going to click on each column individually one at a time that I want to convert to number. So I'm going to highlight the entire column A and go to text to columns and now I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to click finish. 
and you can see it converted it to a number. So I'm going to do D, text to columns, and finish, and E, text to columns, and finish. Now, you can see that these are actual numbers, but they're not aligned properly. So I'm going to select cell D2 and E2 and go Control Shift down and right click and format cells and under fraction I want to select up to two digits and click OK now it aligned all that perfectly now I need to format this sheet for printing but before I do that I want to uh, get back to this this is actually a formula and I have two instances of the name column there I only want one, I want this one. So what I want to do, I can't just delete this or this or I'll get an error in my formula. And actually, in reality, I don't want a formula to be present in my worksheet. I just want the text, the result of the formula. So I'm going to click on this um, cell I1 here and I'm going to hold down my control and shift key and right click and I'm going to click copy and click in H1 and right click and click paste values only so values only so now I can hit escape and I can delete I and J delete that entire column so now we got that now we're ready to get back to formatting our sheet to be printed out first thing I want to do is make this header row here bold so a1 control shift over and go home and make them bold <clears throat> now what I want to do is auto fit these columns but before I do that if I needed to make these this text the font bigger I need to go ahead and do all that before I auto fit but in this case I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I got here now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of column A and go control shift over again and now I can auto fit all these columns in one shot just by hovering over the intersection of two columns there any two it doesn't matter as long as it's in the selected area and when it turns to a bold line with the arrow on the left and right I can double click and it automatically formatted everything now or auto fitted all the columns now I have an option here I could get rid of edge banding if I want to and I can get rid of inset carvings if I want to but I never know In future jobs I may want the edge banding or I may want the inset carvings now in another video I'll show you how you can make the macro prompt you and ask you if you want to get rid of these or not but right now <clears throat> what I need to do or what I want to do is format this column for the text to to automatically wrap so I want to go highlight the whole column right click format cells go to alignment and wrap text and click OK now if I've got a bunch of edge banding in here after I run the macro I can just adjust the column width and it will wrap the text and then you know adjust the column height to get everything to work for me so what I need to do now is put some borders on this thing and we should be pretty much good to go so I'm going to go control shift over and down and I want to go to my border selection here I'm going to select all borders and I want a thick box border around the entire document now I want my top header row here I want a thick border around it so all that's done and now what I need to do is get my page set up for printing I'm going to go to page layout print titles and under page I'm going to select landscape and then under sheet I want my top row to repeat on each sheet so right here under rows to repeat at top I'm going to click in that formula tab there and I'm going to just select all of row 1 now it's saying all of row 1 will repeat at the top of each page I'm going to click OK and we're pretty much done I can go into uh, developer 
and stop recording and we're good to go on that so what I want to do now is bring up a totally different job and test this macro out okay so I've got a totally new job here um, what I want to do is just run the macro and see if it works so I'm going to hold down my control and my shift key and type it in S control shift and S and you can see the macro working now and it is done and that did not take long at all so let's look down here and see if we got everything that is correct you can see I got my assembly numbers in here and this particular case right here this toe kick quarter inch maple it says assembly one but it was not actually a cabinet so it's not got the cabinet number in there which is basically what it's supposed to do so I believe we're good to go on this and on the next video I'll be we'll be looking into the actual code itself and clean cleaning it up and uh, when I ran this macro you saw the screen flash and you can see all the stuff going on um, I'll show you how to keep that from happening and we'll speed up the macro quite a bit and we'll clean up all the scrolling that I've done and maybe add a few bells and whistles so be sure you stay tuned and as always be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can get all my tips and tricks and hey if this video helped you give me a thumbs up and as always thank you for watching and have a good day